is a special presentation of EA Sports from the Coliseum in Oakland. Our tribute to the coach, the John Madden Legacy Game. I'm Brandon Gaughan here to take you through the proceedings. And coming up, we're going to tell the story of a man who was truly larger than life and whose impact on the sport of football certainly is going to live on for decades and decades to come. Now, we've assembled a couple of rosters featuring some of Coach's favorite players from both yesterday and today. And Coach himself will be on the sidelines for both squads trying to motivate his guys to victory. And I'm joined now by my good friend Charles Davis. CD, your thoughts on John Madden and what he meant to the sport he loved so much. For me, Brandon, it's the word joy. He brought that to the game of football and brought the game to so many people. He stayed involved his entire life. And moving forward, when you think of football, Time for old times. What do you say we play some football as we are underway from Oakland in the John Madden Legacy game? And no run back here on the opening kickoff as we'll start at the 25. So it's the NFC Stars who will get the ball first. And Charles, as we alluded to, we've got a different era of coach on each sideline. So the man coaching this NFC squad, we'll call him Young John Madden. This is a coach who was trying to establish a foothold in the NFL and on the cusp of doing it very successfully. Yeah, you think back to that period, those early days as a coach of the Raiders, the late 60s in the AFL and then in the NFL in the early 70s. Coach was a guy who was ahead of his time. The Raiders were one of the first teams to have mini camps, one of the first to film practice because he wanted to practice coaching as much as he could. And his teams, they were successful right from the start of his head coaching tenure. It'll be Sanders to begin the drive. So as we mentioned at the top, you know, let's take you through the life of John Madden. And you know, it's very fitting that we're here back in the Bay Area, not just because John's so associated with Raider football, but also because this was where he spent his formative years. Yeah, he grew up over in Daly City with his buddy John Robinson, who would also become an NFL head coach. And he played his high school ball at Jefferson High. Eventually wound up playing tackle at the University of Oregon and later Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Played well enough that in 1958, he was a 21st round draft pick of the Philadelphia Eagles. That's right, the draft had 30 rounds then. And they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. Throwing his far. And tight coverage there. It's knocked away incomplete. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test him early. But it proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. Back deep, two-time Pro Bowler Dante Hall. And the fair catch is made at about the 27-yard line. So Charles, as mentioned, we've got another Coach Madden over here on the AFC sideline. Of course, his Raiders, members of the AFC West. So this is a conference he battled in for his entire career. And you think about the landscape of the NFL as he was getting into the back half of his tenure. It was a golden era for coaches. You had Don Shula, Tom Landry, Chuck Knoll, Bud Grant. But it was John Madden who had the best winning percentage of a all CD. 7.59, the best ever. Brandon, it's hard to believe he could be so successful in a conference with all those great teams. The Steelers won four Super Bowls. The Dolphins won two and were a mainstay in the playoffs. The Colts were tough. The Broncos came on late and went to a Super Bowl themselves. But against Hall of Fame coaches, John Madden's record, 36-16-2. That's pretty incredible. His Raiders were a factor each and every year. But Charles, you mentioned Coach was a 21st-round draft pick back in 1958. It was the Philadelphia Eagles who selected him. But unfortunately for John, knee problems, they just continued to dog him. He was hurt in his first training camp. Actually never saw the field as a player in the NFL. But it was still during his time with the Eagles. You and I were talking about this before going on air. 
that you could start to see the light bulb going on for what his career path might entail. And it went on in a big way, didn't it? Because while he was rehabbing his knee, he started to spend a lot of time breaking down film with the Eagles with quarterback Norm Van Brocklin, the future Hall of Famer and future head coach in the NFL. Remember, Norm Van Brocklin coached with the Falcons, he coached with the Vikings. And it was there during that time, I think Coach Madden realized his love of football and love for teaching, combining all that together, and that meant being a football coach. So in 1960, began his coaching career at a small college south of San Luis in baseball called Alan Hancock, and then later at San Diego State University under another legendary coach, the guy who could throw it around pretty well, Don Coriel. On is the Hall of Famer Ray Guy to punt this away on fourth down. Here's Hester. 51 yards on the punt there. And the NFC will take over first and 10. With the NFC offense coming out here. And you know, Charles, Coach Madden always said that if he had one drive to win a game and he had to pick a quarterback, he would pick Kenny Stabler. But I think if you asked him to omit any of his Raiders players, there's a good chance the guy he'd select would be Brett Favre. Brett Favre is always smiling. He's always laughing. He's always talking to someone. He remembers that it's a game. And if it's a game, you should have fun. And Brandon, that always reminds me of a great movie line where one of the players was telling the coach, every time I say it's a game, you say it's a business. And every time I say it's a business, you say it's a game. With coach, it was always a game. They start on the ground here at Sanders. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Charles, you know, it was in the early 1960s that a young John Madden made the acquaintance of the owner of the Oakland Raiders, one Al Davis, of course, and the two, they really bonded, would become one of the best owner-coach duos in NFL history. And to take it a step further, Al Davis became someone who John referred to as his best friend. Yeah, 1967, Brandon. Al Davis hired Coach Madden to be a linebacker's coach. Remember, this was still the AFL at that point. We had not merged totally with the NFL. And Coach Madden, he paid dividends almost immediately. Up the Raiders won the AFL title in 1968. And that meant a date for the Green Bay Packers in what was now known as Super Bowl II. But by 1969, at the age of 32, just 32, Brandon, John Madden assumed the mantle of head coach of the Oakland Raiders. And what a ride. He the Raiders in the NFL were about to go on. First time these two have hooked up this afternoon, and it's a first day. Charles, you talked about John Madden and the Raiders going on a ride. Well, try these numbers on for size. In 10 seasons as a head coach, the Raiders won their division seven times. They finished second the other three times, and he became the youngest coach to amass 100 career regular season victories and is still, to this day, the franchise leader and wins. And when you think about it, that's where that rivalry with Kansas City really took root, as did the expression commitment to excellence. And boy, was it personified by the players who played for Coach Madden. On offense, how about quarterback Kenny Stable, wide receiver Cliff Branch, wide receiver Fred Blitnikoff, tight end Dave Casper, to name a few. How about this great lineman he had? Center Jim Otto, guard Gene Upshaw, tackle Art Shell, all of them in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And guys on the defensive side of the ball, the man stork himself, Ted Hendricks, Willie Brown, John Matuzak, Otis Sistro, and Big Ben Davidson. So many great players, so many great memories. They'll have to deal with a second and 14 now after the loss. Another run here with Sanders. And he's got it across midfield and down to about the 47-yard line. So we're through one at the Coliseum in Oakland. Nothing, nothing, our score. This is the John Madden Legacy Game on EA Sports. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. To throw as far. Man open, it's cup. He's got it. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. Charles, you think about all the success that John Madden had as an NFL head coach, and he had plenty, and we talked about it, including the 10 straight winning seasons, a Super Bowl title, 
But like any great coach, he also suffered through a few tough losses along the way as well. And Brandon, those tough losses came in high stakes games because they always had such great success. Think about it this way. Six times in his 10 years, the Raiders were knocked out near the AFL championship game or the AFC championship game. But might be a divisional round exit. That's the one that bothered him most of all. Three River Stadium, December 1972. Yes, the immaculate reception game. Franco Harris grabbing the ball that was deflected. Almost at his shoe tops, he picked it up and took it in for a game-winning score to give the Steelers a 13-7 victory. And partner, anyone who loves black and silver still doesn't believe that ball hit anyone in black and silver that day, and that play should never have counted. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Up the middle they go with Sanders. Breaks the tackle. He's got room to run. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the five. A big hitter there. A first down gain of 26 yards. The CD, we spoke of some of the Raiders' tough playoff losses through the decade of the 70s, but for one shining season, they put it all together, and that was 1976. You remember a 13-1 regular season, a memorable playoff win over New England. They dominated the Steelers 24-7 in the AFC title game, and then a meeting with the Minnesota Vikings in Super Bowl XI. Oh, Brandon, what a game that was down at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. A gorgeous 53-degree day, perfect for football. Raiders got out to a 16-0 lead at the half, and Clarence Davis, no relation, although I would certainly claim it. Strong on the ground, 137 yards rushing. How about Freddie Bolitnikoff, the MVP of that game, catching everything that came his way. Kenny Stabler running the offense with precision, and we all remember the one that sealed it. The grand old man himself, Willie Brown, with the laser-focused eyes, picking off Fran Tarkenton and taking it 75 yards for a touchdown. 32 to 14, the final score. Raiders had their first Super Bowl title, and we got the iconic shot of Coach Madden. And that's gonna be caught. Touchdown NFC. Randy Moss, a two-yard touchdown grab as his guys are first onto the scoreboard here this afternoon. Well, that's just how they drew it up, C.D. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, we got to give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. Extra point by Anderson, up and good. And it's now a 7 nothing game. Following the touchdown, here's Anderson to kick it away. No run back here for Hall, and this will come out to the 25. But the AFC making their way out, and it's one of Coach's favorites, another local guy, Tom Brady, who will be at the controls. And boy, Coach always admired the way number 12 could run an offense, and especially his ability to stay calm under pressure. Tom Brady is a guy who's always looking downfield. He never looks at the rush. He hangs in the pocket, and he makes a throw. He's a cool guy, and he's a tough guy. Let me tell you, there's no one calmer in the pocket than Tom Brady. And I know that Coach has a great appreciation for Tom Brady. He turned 45 back on August 3rd because Coach coached a guy like him in uh, George Blanda, who played a long time in the NFL. In this game, it features legends and active players. Tom Brady qualifies as both. Brady now on first down. A uh, quick throw, knocked away, and incomplete. So, Charles, after that Super Bowl title in the 76 season, the Raiders again advanced the AFC Championship game the following year, but they fell to the Denver Broncos on New Year's Day by a field goal, and that ended their chances for back-to-back -back titles. And then in 1978, after missing out on the playoffs in that season, 
John Madden, he actually stepped down as coach of the Raiders January 4th, 1979. Yeah, and that was a surprise for the league because remember, Brandon, he coached 10 seasons in the NFL, but he put everything he had into the Oakland Raiders, into being a head football coach, into guiding, mentoring, loving his players. And he just sort of felt like it was the right time to step away. And even though he was just 42 when he left, even though there would be overtures for a return to coaching in the future, many overtures, he never returned to the sideline. And even though he didn't, we all know his work with the NFL was far from finished, and a lot of chapters of the John Madden story were still left to be written. Here's Ray Guy now. Call that a 44-yard punt, five on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Now the NFC heading back out. Hall of Famer Randy Moss, a part of this offense. And Coach Madden, boy, he always appreciated the ferociousness with which number 84 attacked the football in the air. As Randy Moss says, just chuck it up there, dog, and I'll go get it. And Coach, boy, did he ever go get it. Over 15,000 receiving yards, 156 touchdowns. And how about this, from his rookie year of 1998 until 2009, those were his prime seasons, right? He led the league in touchdowns five times, but even more so. He showed us all how to go up and get it. Great body control. No one's ever done it better playing the ball in the air. On first down, Favre. That'll be caught. It's Cup. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones at a first down. That's a nice throw there. And he's obviously feeling pretty good because, remember, he had a touchdown pass on the last drive. And here he comes out throwing again. And they wind up getting good yardage and a first down right out of the gate. The big play to start him out has him at the 45 already. Play action. It's far. That's going to be complete on the sideline, but, you know, that throw left him no room to run, and the good footwork nearly all for nine. Partner took a while for him to lock onto a receiver, and he finally found his man coming left to right across the formation. But by the time he got the ball to him, not much of a chance to turn up field and make anything out of it. On second down, Favre. Over the middle, complete. It's Moss. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. They'll throw on first down with Favre. 20, 10, and he will reach the eight-yard line before going out. What a play that turns out to be, 36 yards. He had one touchdown earlier, nearly a second one there. Yeah, it took a touchdown-saving tackle to keep him out of the end zone after a big play. Perhaps you go right back to him. Don't need the distance, but maybe he can pick things off after a big effort. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. Here's Favre to throw. Caught on the slant. A gain of seven that time. Second goal. 
It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? How about this? They'll try the option. Left side. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Now far. And that's going to be caught. Touchdown, NFC. Jerry Rice as the first half is winding down. And they are able to add on to their advantage. CD for them. This has just been an offensive explosion here in the second quarter. Yeah, it held scoreless in the first quarter. Now they find the end zone again here in the second. Sometimes you just have to have some patience. A lot of people think it's always an adjustment. You have to change what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to do your game plan just a little bit better. And I think that's part of what we're seeing here. Extra point by Anderson. Up and good. And it's now 14 to nothing. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays. And it's finished off by an NFC touchdown. Let's go, baby. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. For the AFC offense heading back out. You know, Charles, Coach really loved to utilize his tight ends in the passing game. You think about Dave Casper, Hall of Famer for those great Raider teams. And I think he saw a lot of Dave Casper in an all-Madden staple, Tony Gonzalez. Tony Gonzalez is the type of tight end I think everyone's looking for. He's a guy that can make some big plays from that tight end position. Let me tell you, you better make sure you have him accounted for on every play. And that's exactly right, because Dave Casper, he can shred defenses down the middle of the field. And that's exactly what Tony Gonzalez did in his entire career. A 14-time Pro Bowl selection. Only Tom Brady has more. There are six guys in the 15,000-yard receiving club. He's the only tight end in there. Tony Gonzalez, every snap, he had to know where he was because he could make plays short, medium, and long, and often put the ball in the end zone. It's a pickup. So we are at halftime of the John Madden Legacy game, and now we present a special tribute to the man of the hour, narrated by the Raiders' own Trey Mosley. What comes to mind when you hear the name Madden? Is it the coach who led the Raiders to their first Super Bowl victory? Perhaps it's the broadcaster who entertained millions of fans. Or maybe it's the video game known simply by his name. But no matter what comes to mind when you hear the name Madden, everyone thinks of one thing. Football. The core of it was football. It's the greatest game in the world. The left goes to the right, the right goes to the left. Madden is on the field. He wants to know if it's real. John Madden goes on the shoulders of his players. In my 
mind, John Madden is the most important figure in the history of professional football. Show me somebody else who did it on three levels the way John did it. There's nobody. Boy, Charles, yeah, that's, that is really well done. Coach was something else, wasn't he? I'm reminded what Al Davis said when he was inducting coach into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Brandon. He loved the game. He loved his team. He loved the Raiders. He loved this league. And you can see it with everything he does. No doubt. But it's quite possible, though, that now he would say, hey, enough of that. Let's play some football. Now the second half forthcoming from Oakland. Going to get the football first here as we are back underway from Oakland in the John Madden Legacy game. And he will not bring it out. It's a touchback. The offense for the AFC set to go now. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. Virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. And they've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. So now, Charles, to pick up the story we've been telling, John Madden at 42, he just completed a 10-year stint as the coach of the Raiders. He wants to step away a bit from the grind of coaching, but he doesn't want to step away from the game of football. So he ends up signing on with CBS in 1979 to try his hand at broadcasting. And much like his coaching career, he was pretty much an instant success. Partner, he really connected with the people right from the start. And people may not remember, he wasn't even on the number one team in the beginning. He worked his way up. But the same things that made him a great coach made him a great broadcaster. The ability to show the big picture, yet break it down into the details. That's what he did with his teams. That's what he did with the people. That way, he was simple to understand, yet insightful for viewers. And he did with that big personality that he had, one that connected with everyone. It'll be a three and it will be the first and ten as they take over. The offense for the NFC ready to get their next drive started. First and ten, it's Favre. Sanders has it over the middle. So for Coach Madden, Charles, you know, by 1981, his broadcasting career is really taking off. He's elevated to the network's number one booth that calls all the big matchups. And he gets the plum assignment of calling Super Bowl 16, 49ers and Bengals, and he's teamed up with Pat Summerall. And that pairing ultimately would go on to be one of the most influential in sports broadcasting history influential not just in us listening to them remember they went on and called eight Super Bowls together but how they put together kind of the template that all of us broadcasters follow now sitting down with the head coaches and the quarterbacks and the stars of each team before a ball game to get extra information and the way that those two paired together Pat Summerall short concise to the point and turned it over to coach Madden to fill in all the big details And they go play action with Favre. Gets this one to use check. Uh, as you mentioned, C.D., talking about John Madden, the broadcaster, he called eight Super Bowls with Pat Summerall, three more with Al Michaels later in his career. He spent nearly three decades in the booth, all told. 
And not only was he beloved for his mannerisms, we know that, but he was an innovator as well. Yeah, Brandon, you talk about things like the Telestrator, which totally became identified with him. And now it's a staple for all analysts to have in the booth. And then you think about things like Chuck Duckin on Thanksgiving, when he used words like boom and pow. He helped create the old Madden team. He was a very popular commercial pitch man. And even the Madden Cruiser was unique, and you had to be someone to get a ride on it, too. Now, CD, we did get a little ahead of ourselves talking about John Madden, the broadcaster in the 90s and 2000s, because there was another product during that time period that he became quite famous for, and it's something that you and I know a little bit about, and that's the video game that bears his name. Originally, John Madden Football, when it was first released back in the late 1980s, and now known the world over simply as Madden. And Coach saw this originally as a way to teach the game of football. The early designs were for a seven-on-seven seven game, but he said no chance. He would not sign off on it. He wanted to be as realistic as possible. He told him, call me when it's 11-on-11, 11 11, and he got his wish. Yeah, after that debut, Madden the video game continued to pick up steam through the 90s in a big way, and John himself, many will remember, was a commentator for the series for many years. And now here we are in the 2020s, and this game has sold somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 million copies. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. So, CD, you look at the accumulation of John Madden's achievements in the world of football, the coaching success, the Super Bowl title, the incredible career as a broadcaster with 12 Emmy Awards, Madden the video game. It was very fitting back in 2006 that John Madden got the call to be enshrined into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. A more deserving person you would not find. He gave an incredible speech on that day, Brandon. So many of his former Raider players were in attendance. He talked about how he envisioned that when the last person turns off the lights in the hall every night, that the bus talk football amongst themselves. And what a discussion that might be. Yeah, he finished his speech by saying, today feels like the second time in my life that I'm being carried off on the shoulders of others. Yet instead of off the field, it's into the Hall of Fame. This has been the sweetest ride of them all. So through three quarters of the John Madden legacy game, it's the NFC Stars and young coach Madden on top. And we'll be back to the Coliseum after this. Wisnowski on to punt as he sends this one away. That's taken on the 25. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and the AFC will take over first and 10. The AFC offense set to take their next drive. And you're still in this game. I mean, yeah, you haven't scored. Offense obviously has struggled, but you're only two scores down, so all hope not lost. Not at all, because we were talking about the NFL, and teams can score fast in this league. Quick strikes, you're right back in it. You're exactly right. Keeping hope alive. When you think about John Madden in his retirement years post-broadcasting, he was about as active as most people are in their working years. I mean, he continued to play a key role on the NFL's competition committee. He was available to a wide range of people as a tutor, as a mentor. He continued to teach the game of football to all who would listen. And Charles, as you and I know, he even continued to provide input, a lot of input, on the Madden video game. Yeah, I know a lot of folks that design and build this game certainly look forward to their yearly visits out to the Madden compound that he had out in the East Bay. They pitched the new aspects of each year's game to him, get his feedback, and then get to sit back and spend six hours with him on a Sunday watching football and listening to him tell stories and talk even more ball. It had to be an incredible experience for all involved. That his first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. I know the toss play begins with the guy taking the snap and turn around and tossing it to the runner. But where the real intrigue is, can they seal the edge, whether it's an offensive tackle or a tight end in the direction they want to run the football? If they do that, 
that's the result that you get, that type of a gain. If they don't, oftentimes it's not a very successful play. So the AFC with the football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. There's no question that coming into this game, this defense was pretty vocal about his desire to take this running back out of his game. And all that pregame whooping has turned into results. Now the AFC going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Now Brady. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Deion Sanders, the Hall of Famer, with a pick. And they get the football. They'll set up shop at their own 49-yard line. How about one last great play defensively, and that should, for all intents and purposes, finish off this shutout. That's as good a defensive performance as we've seen in a long, long time. And I know as a team they will celebrate, but I will guarantee you the defensive guys, they'll get together somewhere and have their own private celebration. A shutout, that's something to be cherished. Ready to begin their next drive here, the NFC offense. And a few kneel downs should come very close to finishing this one off, depending on whether or not we see any defensive timeouts. They still have two, but using them would just be prolonging what's really already been decided. Now the AFC going to take a timeout. It's their second, as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven they'll go again with Sanders and he's going to get this one down to the 45 the now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as it'll come with an even 90 seconds remaining on the clock third down they turn to Sanders and he is going to have the first down and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd four yards on the pickup good enough to extend the drive I have to chuckle to myself a little bit Brandon because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line I know exactly what they're saying if you call a pass play here we're going to call a timeout. Run the football <laughs> we've got control of this thing get in behind us and let's go their time to shine Victory very much in sight now as they'll take a knee. Well, this has certainly been special. And, Charles, as we wind down toward the end of this John Madden legacy game, your final thoughts? Well, let's face it, partner. It's going to be hard to overestimate the impact that he made, not just on the sport of football, but on his family, friends, players, co-workers, and in the lives of millions of Americans who watched it. There will never be another John Madden. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. So it's a win here for the NFC. Just an incredible afternoon of football and remembering the life of John Madden. And before we go, one final message. And for all of us at EA Sports, this one's for you, Coach. say this I thank you all very much this has been the sweetest ride of them all